Clever Rana Long ago in a small village lived a man named Banga who had the habit of borrowing. Banga had borrowed a large sum of money from Raju and despite repeated reminders did not repay it. One day Raju went to see Banga at his house while he was busy entertaining guests. He tapped on his door and patiently waited outside. Banga came out and was surprised to see him. Raju, why did you come here? Haven't I told you that I would come to return your money myself? Stop running after me all the time. When will that day come? said an irritated Raju. You don't seem to bother about repaying your debt. You have stopped meeting me. You don't respond to my calls either. What's your problem? Banga said. Shh. Keep calm. Don't yell. I have guests at home today. But Raju was too angry to care. So what? Let them also know what kind of a person you are. You are a liar. Shouldn't they know? Banga was very embarrassed before his guests. He quickly tried to dismiss him with a reassurance. All right, you go today. I will definitely repay your money tomorrow. And shut the door in Rashu's face. But Banga had lied. He had no intention of repaying the loan. Instead, he had planned to threaten Raju away. The next evening, he waylaid Raju on a deserted stretch of road. Raju was coming along with his friend Rana. Rana was a clever man and also a fast friend of Raju. He often helped him in times of need. Rana was well aware of the situation between Raju and Banga. On seeing Banga, Raju said, Hey, you had said that you will come to my house to repay the loan today. But you are taking a leisurely walk here. No one can insult me and get away with it, said Banga, drawing out a knife. Rana was taken aback. He exclaimed with fear, Hey, what is this? Put that knife away. Banga replied viciously, if you act smart or open your mouth, I will kill you first and then your friend. Rana was an intelligent man. Instead of feeling scared, he started thinking fast. He knew he had to do something. Suddenly an idea struck him. Rana turned to Raju and said, What we have done is correct. Raju was utterly puzzled. He did not understand what Rana was saying. Rana winked at him and said, I'm talking about the letter. Then Rana looked at Banga and said, Raju has already given a letter to his wife to be handed over to the judge. Catching on his friend's idea, Raju added, I was expecting you would do something like this. So, I've already left a letter with my wife. If I do not return home by nightfall, she will take the letter to the chief judge. Banga was shaken up by these words. He said hesitantly, No, no, I, I know you're bluffing. Rana, don't try act smart with me. But Raju carried on. The letter details the business transaction between us and the steps I took to recover the money. It also expresses my fear that you might cause me some harm. Banga lowered the knife immediately. He knew that Raju could be bluffing, but he did not want to take a chance. The judge was known to be harsh on defaulters and murderers. Banga then said, I'll spare your life, but I'll chop off your nose. That will teach you a lesson you will never forget. Rana stepped in between immediately and said, Okay, okay, don't do anything like that. Raju will give you in writing that you owe him nothing. 
Raja took over. If I write off your loan, will you forgive me? Bangar replied, I might, but you must give me a receipt saying, I've paid you in full. I don't trust you. Raju immediately said, Fine, I'll prepare a receipt right away. He hastily opened his bag and was about to give Banga a receipt when Rana intervened. Wait, we'll require a witness for this. Banga shouted, No need for a witness. Just give me in writing that I've paid you in full. Get out of my sight after that. Rana said, But the receipt will have no value unless there is a witness. Why don't we make that uh, uh, old banyan tree a witness? What? A banyan tree? Banga pondered and reasoned that there could be no harm in making the banyan tree a witness. It wasn't like the tree could reveal the circumstances in which the receipt was made. So he agreed. Everyone stood under the banyan tree. Raju wrote out the receipt and gave it to Banga. Banga placed it carefully in his pocket and went away, very pleased with himself. He was under the impression that he had taken advantage of Raju's foolishness by agreeing to use the banyan tree as a witness. After he had left, Raju spoke to his friend. He has taken all my money. I am broke. But thank you, Rana, for saving my life. Rana just smiled and said, Hey, wait till tomorrow when Banga will learn his lesson. The next day, Banga received a summon from the court. The judge asked Banga, Did you borrow money from Raju? Banga answered in the affirmative. The judge questioned further. Why haven't you repaid it? Banga promptly said that he had. The judge asked him to show the receipt next. Banga triumphantly took the receipt out of his pocket and handed it over to him. The judge looked at the receipt and asked, So, your witness was a banyan tree, Banga said. Yes. As there was nobody else there, the judge continued. So you admit to accosting Raju in a deserted spot? Startled Banga quickly said that he had just happened to meet him there. The judge then informed Banga that the receipt was useless because it did not carry Raju's signature, but only the signature of the witness. Banga gasped. Snatching the paper from the judge's hand, he stared at it and turned pale. Instead of putting his signature at the bottom, Raju had scribbled Bani entry. Banga screamed, My lord, the two friends have cheated me. After he had had enough of Banga's lies, the judge declared, I sentence you to five years of imprisonment, along with a fine of rupees fifty thousand for failing to repay your debt in time and threatening Raju with his life. Raju couldn't thank Rana enough. My friend, you gave me a wonderful idea and saved my life and my money. Thank you very much. The duo celebrated the victory of truth and their friends.